Hello brothers and sisters. There are a few people that are rejoicing over the fact that God is telling us that the work of salvation and sanctification is all His. That means He saves us and keeps us saved. We don't do anything and He does everything from beginning to end. By his sovereign election, God chose those predestined for salvation, and at the cross, Jesus becomes their salvation and their good works before the Father. The work of salvation for the whole body of Christ, or collective body, the Church, has been a process as the ages come by and they are added to the body as they are born from God. Individually, but as a group, they must come to perfection, so that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having a spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Ephesians 527. Therefore, as we look at these scriptures, I want us to keep in mind the wheat plantation or crop and harvest, the planting of the seed, watering the plant, caring for it, and when the wheat gets perfect and ready for the harvest, then the bundling, the cutting, winnowing, threshing, and storing in the barn. So let's take a look at this scripture. Uh, Ephesians 4, 12 to 14. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lied in way to deceive. Now, the first thing that jumps out of it is for the perfecting of the saints. And obviously, the issue here is always with the word perfect or perfecting. Because we, as sinful, fleshly, carnal beings that we are, and since we would never be perfect in this flesh, we cannot apprehend the full meaning of that word, so we get around it as much as we can. Therefore, we will take a look at it in this study. There are two words in this verse that are translated perfecting and perfect. And again, keep in mind that the wheat at some point will have to reach that point of ripeness. The first one is perfection. G2677. It comes from G2675, which is complete furnishing, objectively perfecting which is the meaning the devil uses to explain the other one which is perfect and get completely around the true meaning of perfect. He says, we as believers will study the Bible or seek the kingdom of heaven until we become mature in the word so that we can preach to others or be furnished with knowledge in order to edify others in the word of truth but never coming to perfection, only mature. This meaning is also used to put burdens on other people's shoulders, saying we must strive with our fleshly sins every day until we be Christ-like or mature and be a good witness to others. They call this progressive sanctification. Now, I'm not denying that the meaning of the word is complete furnishing for the ministry, 
but that is the progressive revelation of the truth for the time they were in, given to the church for the edifying of the body of Christ, just like the prophets of old. Second Peter one twenty one. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but by holy men of God, take as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. They were always equipped or furnished with Holy Ghost revelation, and that was done progressively until the ripeness of the wheat. Matthew 13:30. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers, all that was done for the edifying of the body of Christ. That edification was done until. And that is where we really want to get in here. Because the church has always been furnished with a revelation for the ministry until or till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. And let me point out the fact that the word till, or until, means it has an end. And the problem here is always the argument that it is not now, it's laid on. In fact, some people put it millions or thousands of years in, in the future. But are, can we be witnessing the fulfillment of this? Let's go on. Until we will come to the perfect knowledge of the Son of Christ, the Son of God. And that is what I was talking about in my last video. Can we know the whole truth? Or all the truth? which is the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. You can't get more fullness of that or whole. And I know this is controversial. But for the reply I get when I say this is yes, but we are not there yet. Or no, we will never be perfect. But really? They think that we will only, it will only happen in heaven, but we will see that the, it, it is to happen here on earth in a moment. Now let's take a look at the beginning of the word perfect. It's G5046, complete in various applications of labor, growth, mental, and moral character, etc. Neuter is a noun with G3588, completeness or full age, man and perfect. In order to understand the meaning of, the, of a word, we have to take it to its absolute extent. For example, complete means it's lacking nothing. Full of age, he can't get no older. That is, that, that is the extent of that person's life, growth. Just like the wheat, it can't get no more rip, ripened. It is perfect, flawless, no spot or wrinkle. Ephesians 5.27 And then expounds on that by saying it is necessary for the edifying of the body of Christ. Let's talk about that a little. First, the body is edified or built as they become fully edified or perfect. Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a, a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That is the day that he will come uh, for his bride, uh, uh, perfect, without spot or wrinkle, holy. Now, he has been perfect in his church through our history. We believe we're at the end of time, and yeah, some act as though they don't believe God is fulfilling his work concerning the perfection of his bride. Look at the passage of Noah getting drunk in Genesis 9. I notice this 
consequences for that judging people according to the appearance or their outward behavior and are not judging them righteously. Let's see what God says about it. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now keep that in mind because he found grace. It's not in him. The perfection is not in him. But he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. First thing we find is that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And as uh, a consequence of that, God says of him, Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Very interesting because God says that Noah was perfect, sound without spot, undefiled, upright, whole. Okay. That is the definition of what God is. That is the definition of what God is. Perfect. But we know Noah was not perfect, for he also had sin living in his mortal body, right? Romans 7, 17, 18. Now then it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. And I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. I mean, he was just like we are. Sin in his flesh. Not perfect. Now, God asked them in the Old Testament to be perfect, just like he asked of us. In Genesis 17, 1, and Abraham, and when Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. So we need to find out what does God mean when he says that Noah is perfect. And how do we become perfect as he is perfect? Let's look at the same command, commandment to be perfect in the New Testament. It's in Matthew 5, 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now the first thing we notice is that the same word in both instances in this verse, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Both of them uh, are the same word. So we can surely say that perfection is a character of God. That is what is, He is. He is perfect. So men are not perfect, and men cannot achieve this character by, himself, by themselves, and never will be. So man only becomes perfect as God becomes his perfection, or he becomes one with God. And here's the bottom line of this subject, Romans 7, 17. Now then it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwell in me. For in me that is in my flesh dwell no good thing, for will is present with me. How to perform that which is good, I find not. Man cannot perform that which is good. Good being another character of God, for God is good. Matthew 7, 19, 17. How is it then that God calls Noah perfect? And how does he command us to be perfect? We know God speaks in parables to hide the truth. So what is the meaning of that? Matthew 13, 35, God says, And I will open my mouth in parable. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. And he reveals that to his children. And 1 Corinthians 2, 10 says, But God had revealed them to us by his Spirit. That is the mysteries. God says that the mysteries, it is being given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them it's not given. It says in Matthew somewhere. Now, he wants to get us working. That's, what, that's where the trick is. He, he, he wants us to get us working for our salvation and for our sanctification. Yeah, He wants us to get working. 
trying to achieve that perfection on our own so that we can finally fall, fall down flat on our faces and say, Lord, I can't. Have mercy on me. And then he shows us the mystery. And no, this would only happen to the children of God, not to the unsaved. Again, he says, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them it is not given. So God calls Noah perfect because he is looking at the righteousness God has already provided for him. In Hebrew 11.7, by faith Noah became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. That is where we are saved and justified and sanctified through grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now Noah wasn't any different than any other man in his flesh. God did not look at him and say, Wow, look at this guy, how perfect he has become. Wow, he has almost obtained that perfection. He just have to keep working harder and he's going to obtain it. So I'm just going to put some more tribulation on him so that he can obtain that perfection. That's what they tell us in, in the churches. I mean, Satan, he's, you know, always trying to have us working for for the um, the uh, sanctification and now no we are never going to obtain that perfection never not matter how much we work at it is unobtainable that is the devil's deception and he gets us to glory in our perfection because of our sinful nature. So that is not the purpose of God on that command. Be ye thou perf perfect. It's a trap. For the flesh. It's a trap. Now you might be saying. Oh well. That is easy to comprehend now. We know that we are saved by grace and not by works. But then we say that once we're saved, we get to, we have to get to work, and and we get caught up in the trap of works, and end up doing what the Galatians were doing in Gal Galatians three three. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? It's the same thing. I mean, they 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 they, they tell you, oh, okay, you're not saved by works. But once you're saved, now you get to work for sanctification, which is the trap. You begin in the spirit, and now you want to perfect the work of God by the flesh. Now, we do good works in the flesh. The problem with that is that those good works come from the flesh, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they are not good after all, but only part of the evil system. I mean, it's like Paul just said in, in Romans 7. It is, uh, I, you know, I can't find, let me show you that. I can't find that. Um, now, it says, now then it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwell in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. See, we cannot find that, that um, the way to do the, the, the spiritual good or the heavenly good. All we do is the earthly good, the fleshly good, which is not good before the Father. And we need to understand that. We think that now we become good. Again, we become saints. No sinners, but we become saints. Which is the same as being perfect. We get the physical and the spiritual mixed up again and end up having begun in the spirit, now work, uh, made perfect by the flesh. We're just now trying to make perfect by the flesh. 
we have to understand we have to understand that the physical carnal fleshly body has nothing to do with the spiritual obedience to the physical law is not the same as obedience to the spiritual law we have these two mixed up and the proof is that we judge people's spirituality spirituality by their actions when that is not the measuring stick the measuring stick is the truth their doings or lack of doing things is physical no spiritual okay their doings or lack of doing things is physical no spiritual we see a good sample in that in in the story of noah and we're going to see the consequences of judging by the flesh or the doings the works and noah began to be a husband man and he planted a vineyard and he drank of the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered within his tent and ham the father of canaan saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without here we see that his sons ham and sham saw that his father has gotten drunk and he was not naked that he was now naked lying on the floor the implication of this is that he made a big deal of this and, and went out and told his brother saying hey brothers look at my father the perfect man the one who walks with god the preacher of righteousness he's not really perfect he's a sinner he just got drunk he's all messed up he cannot be a true christian okay maybe i exaggerated a little bit but that is the implication of what happened he was mocking his father on the contrary his brothers covered noah's physical sin because they understood who is the perfect one and they also understood their evil sinful nature genesis 9:23 and Shem and Ham took a garment and laid upon it the, uh, both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father and their faces were backward and they saw no their father's nakedness they they did not see his nakedness they were an able they were able to see past the physical into the spiritual and always saw their father wearing the pure fine white linen garment which is Christ so you see they they didn't see they were backward and saw not their father's nakedness Genesis 9:24 and Noah awoke from his wine and knew that his younger son had done what his younger son had done unto him and he said curse be Canaan a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren this is the reward for not being spiritual but carnal you be cursed Genesis 9:26 and he said blessed be the lord god of shame in canaan for um shall be his servant god shall enlarge Japheth and shall dwell in the tents of shem and canaan shall be his servant this is the blessedness of the new birth the grace of god the faith of G- uh, of jesus christ the work of god in us I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the son of God who loved me and gave himself for me that's how he made me perfect that's how Christ lives in me and I'm part of the body of Christ I am born again born from above in 1 John 3:9 we talked about that before but whosoever is born of God cannot sin 
He cannot. He cannot sin because he is born of God. And his seed remaineth in him. He is born of God. That's, that's how you are perfect. But I'm going to leave it right here because like I said before, this is going to be long. This is going to be long study. God bless you all.